Good day, everybody. Welcome to the webinar, Electronics Manufacturing Outsourcing Services Webinar Series Part 2. Surface Technology International Philippines Contract Manufacturing Services for U.S. Medical Equipment Manufacturing Companies. This event is organized by the various Philippine Trade and Investment Centers in the United States and the Philippine Board of Investments. My name is Jay Chavez, and I'm your moderator for today. As a moderator, I hope to provide additional perspectives on the manufacturing landscape in the Philippines. I've worked in the electronics manufacturing industry for over 25 years, and I'm currently the Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Ionix EMS Inc. I'm an advocate of Industry 4.0, IoT and Smart Manufacturing Implementation, and I've shared my insights and experiences in related to these subjects in numerous speaking engagements. Today, we will have a presentation from Undersecretary Rafaelita M. Aldaba, who heads the Department of Trade and Industries Group, Industries of Competitiveness and Innovation Group. And of course, from Mr. Danny Romero of STI Limited Philippines, which is a specialist contract electronics manufacturer. Finally, we'll have a Q&A and a panel discussion to discuss relevant updates in the Philippine business environment in terms of both hardware or infrastructure and software or policy, her role in the region and in Asia. And of course, the benefits and implications brought about by the recent events, such as the signing of the RCEP agreement. Even with the challenges we face in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Philippine remains to be considered as one of the top emerging economies in the leading investment destination. To share more about the developments in the Philippines, may we share a message from the Secretary of the Department of Trade and Industry, Mr. Ramon Lopez. A pleasant day to all. We hope everyone is keeping themselves safe and healthy during this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for attending this event in line with our new marketing brand campaign the Make It Happen in the Philippines to promote our country as an attractive and reliable destination for investments. In particular, we want to highlight our country's competencies on highly specialized electronics subsectors while also promoting our electronics manufacturing services or EMS. Our two nations share a long history of trade, culture, and economic ties. In 2019, the U.S. was the Philippines' third major trading partner, top export market, and fourth top import supplier. Bilateral trade between the Philippines and the U.S. last year amounted to 19.6 billion U.S. dollars, higher than the 18.7 billion U.S. dollars in 2018. Moreover, our balance of trade in that period was at a positive 3.49 billion dollars higher than the previous year's $2.57 billion. Furthermore, the U.S. was our sixth top partner in approved investments in 2019 with $226.45 million. US dollars. And in the first quarter of this year, you were already our second top partner with $112.98 million. US dollars. Prior to the pandemic, our country established very strong economic fundamentals. We were growing at an average of 6.6% over the period of 2016 to 2019. And we were the third fastest growing economy in Asia and second in the ASEAN region. Our strong growth was supported by the resurgence in our manufacturing sector. The average value added growing by almost 34% for the five-year period 2010 to 2014 to 2015 to 2019. The manufacturing sector nearly accounted for 20% of the Philippine economy and our total merchandise exports were on an uptrend. However, due to the global pandemic, the Philippines registered its first economic contraction in two decades in the first quarter of 2020. But we are now seeing improvement as our GDP growth rate improved from negative 16.5 in the second quarter of this year to negative 11.5 in the third quarter. Our export performance after dropping by half in April this year is already better than last year at positive 2% growth rate by September. 
driven by increase in the export of copper and other mineral products, chemicals, and electronic products. Furthermore, our net foreign direct investment or FDIs went up from 41% as of July to 47% last August, and this has been growing for four consecutive months. The investment approvals registered by the Philippine Board of Investments is on track to hit the 1 trillion pesos for the year, the second highest mark in the agency's history. For the first three quarters of 2020, investment approvals already reached over $15 billion. Despite the setbacks and challenges brought about by the pandemic, the Philippines still remains a conducive place to do business and is considered one of the top emerging economies and countries for investments. Reputed business magazine, The Economist, ranked the country as the sixth emerging economy with high financial strength. CEO World Magazine placed Philippines within the top 10 countries to invest in post-COVID. Both the World Bank and the IMF also predict a good economic recovery for the country with forecasts of 6.2% to 6.8% respectively by 2021. Hence, we are working on rebuilding the economy's robust growth at the same level, if not higher than the pre-COVID levels. Philippines offers a domestic market of 110 million people and access to an ASEAN market that is more than 600 million people. Our country also has access to key markets through our free trade agreements and the EU Generalized Scheme of Preferences Plus or GSP Plus and we are also favored by your country's generalized system of preferences. The recent conclusion of the regional Mega Free Trade Agreement, the RCEP, or the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, is further expected to strengthen the Philippine advantage. This agreement signals a renewed vow on a rules-based system for trade and investments in the region with key trade partners that account for 30% of the world's GDP and population, as well as 28% of global trade. Meanwhile, our labor force stands at 49 million and we produce 750,000 annual graduates with wage rates among the most stable in the region. Furthermore, the increase of manufacturing costs in the Philippines is more stable compared to neighboring ASEAN countries. With these in mind, the Philippines offers itself as a strategic partner in services with its large, young, educated, and the tech-savvy population. This is a resource that will be critical in responding to the challenges and opportunities in the digital and interconnected new economy. As foreign companies pursue expansion strategies, they can partner with the Philippines with its excellent track record in supporting global operations of companies from all over the world. Just recently, our country got a much needed boost as we rank among the safest economies in the world. The Philippines placed 12th among the 50th countries based on the highly respected Gallup's 2020 Global Law and Order Report. It's worth noting that we are in the same level as Australia and New Zealand. What's more, the recent passing of the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives Reform Act at the Senate will not only help our efforts in economic recovery, but also push tax reforms. In light of the strong economic partnership between the Philippines and the U.S., it is only natural that our country becomes the investment destination for American businesses going global. Thus, even as the Philippine government is working hard towards the country's recovery against COVID-19, the administration of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte is committed to continue our economic growth story. As we do so, we will create more jobs and employment for the Filipino people, which will give them a better and more comfortable quality of life. That is why we call on our American investors to take a closer look at how you can partner with the Philippines. You will see how we can ably support your business expansion plans and provide you with a deeper insight on how to make it happen in the Philippines. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay tayong lahat.
Well, indeed, the Philippines remains uh, to be a leading investment destination and one of the safest uh, economies in the world. Okay, so now let's go on to the presentations. Our first speaker is Undersecretary Rafaelita Aldaba. Dr. Rafaelita Fita Aldaba is the Undersecretary for Competitiveness and Innovation of the Philippine Department of Trade and Industry. She fulfills a key role in the formulation and implementation of the Inclusive Innovation Industrial Strategy, I3S, which puts innovation at the heart of the country's new industrial policy. Apart from the manufacturing resurgence and industry roadmaps, she, lead, she is leading DTI's initiatives in establishing an inclusive innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem in collaboration with other government agencies, industry, and academe under the inclusive Filipino vision and entrepreneurship roadmap. She is also in charge of the competitiveness and research work of DTI, focusing on supply chain and logistics, e-commerce, accreditation of conformity assessment bodies, and trade and industrial policy. Coming from the recently concluded Manufacturing Summit, let us welcome Yusek Fita Aldaba. Thank you, Jay. Um, if I may just uh, share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, Yusek, you you're okay. Okay, okay, okay. Just uh, enlarge it. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good morning to all those uh, who are here in Manila. I hope you are all staying safe and well in these uh, trying times. And thank you to the Philippine uh, Trade and Investment Center and the Board of Investments for organizing the Make It Happen in the Philippines webinar, focusing on the electronics manufacturing outsourcing services, which is one of the country's priority industries. We want to attract more investments in R&D, in IC design, smart factories and smart products, consumer electronics, auto electronics, medical devices, and other health products. Well, on the, this uh, slide um, tells us a very nice story of the Philippines being seen as an economic star with an average growth of 6.2% in the last 10 years. And just as we reached an inflection point, the pandemic hit us. And like most countries, our growth contracted in the first half of this year by minus 8.6%. This brought us in our first recession since 1998 during the Asian financial crisis. Well, um, manufacturing and services contributed largely to the strong growth, especially during the period 2010 to 2019, with manufacturing growing at an average of 5.8%, while services posted 7.2%. Manufacturing was actually at the cusp of a resurgence, but with the crisis, the industry contracted by 12.6%. Um, in this uh, slide, we can already see that uh, the manufacturing sector has been showing signs of gradual recovery as more subsectors are uh, being reopened. And note that the slower contraction during the third quarter, uh, output from minus 20.7% in the second quarter to minus 9.7% in the third quarter. And in the case of employment, this also slowed down from minus 24% to minus 9%. Note also the improvement in motor vehicle production from May till September, which you can see the um, upward trend after um, May, as well as in the electronics exports from August to September. Production indicators also showed gradual improvements after a steep rise in May, as seen on these charts. The country's uh, macroeconomic fundamentals remain solid and strong, and in fact, with um, investment grade credit ratings being affirmed by uh, Fitch Ratings, Moody's Investors, and Standard and Poor's, despite the economic headwinds. And more recently, I'd like to emphasize uh, our ranking in the Global Innovation Index 2020, which uh, ranks the Philippines 50th out of 131 countries, and this, uh, this is up from number 54 last year. 
this is also the first time that the Philippines has breached the top 50 of the Global Innovation Index, which recognizes the country as an innovation achiever for the second year in a row. And in here from, uh, well, this was also mentioned by uh, Sekman, so let me just uh, go over it very quickly. From January to November of this year, BOI registered investments uh, reached over 15 billion pesos, and we expect to hit 22 billion pesos by uh, end of uh, December. Well, amid the pandemic, we continue to implement our new industrial policy, which is known as Inclusive Innovation Industrial Strategy. This focuses on innovation and it aims to grow globally competitive and innovative industries by embracing Industry 4.0 technologies to create new products, services, and new business models, uh, closing gaps in our domestic supply chain, and um, deepening our participation in global value chains. We are adopting Industry 4.0 technologies to create new industries and upgrade our existing economic activities. Well, uh, as you can see on the slide, the strategy also focuses on um, link linking together our innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem. Well, this is really crucial as we accelerate the commercialization of uh, R&D investments in the country. We are also uh, focusing our efforts in terms of reskilling and upskilling our workforce, equipping them with uh, new digital skills in order to make them Industry 4.0 ready. Another vital pillar is the development of innovative MSMEs and startups, as well as improving our um, ease of doing business, which is a necessary element to create the enabling environment to allow the growth and development of uh, firms and industries. We are uh, prioritizing the following industries and economic activities. Mostly, these are in the manufacturing sector. Number one priority, of course, is uh, the electrical and electronic sector, along with uh, auto and auto parts, aerospace parts, uh, tool and dye, iron and steel, chemicals, uh, shipbuilding, furniture, garments, agribusiness, along with uh, infrastructure um, activities such as those in transport, logistics, uh, tourism. ITBPM is an, another important priority in the services sector along with uh, e-commerce and of course environment and climate change. Our uh, vision for the future, um, we are looking at utilizing technologies like voice recognition, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, uh, robotics, 5G connectivity, and international internet of the industrial internet of things as we create new products or solutions in the following areas, smart buildings and smart home technology, digital health, e-gaming, smart assistance, vehicle technology, resilient technology, audio, video, and uh, ed tech. Well, we observe that um, many of our manufacturing companies especially those with uh, global markets are already starting to innovate and plan their digital transformation and uh, shift to industry 4.0 technologies and products. Uh, apart of course from uh, Ionix, uh, which you would uh, later be, uh, which would later be presented, uh, companies like Toyota just inaugurated its high-tech press line. BMAC is manufacturing e-trikes while uh, Epson has been showcasing its industrial uh, robots. Nidec and Taiyo are uh, Japanese companies that are manufacturing robotic parts in the Philippines. And we have lined up the following Industry 4.0 readiness initiatives. We are actually working with uh, the UNIDO in crafting Industry 4.0 roadmaps for electronics, for automotive, aerospace, and agribusiness. We are also conducting a feasibility study for the establishment of an Industry 4.0 pilot factory together with an Industry 4.0 SME Academy in order to provide Industry 4.0 trainings to um, companies in the country, especially to small and medium uh, enterprises. We are working with the academy in the formulation of an artificial intelligence roadmap that would make the Philippines an AI uh, center of excellence. 
And together with other government agencies, we are formulating a human resource development roadmap in order to reskill and upskill our workforce in preparation for Industry 4.0. We are also planning uh, the implementation of a program that would provide fiscal and non-fiscal assistance to companies that are shifting to Industry 4.0 uh, technologies. And we are working together with uh, uh, the Department of Science and Technology, which is uh, also uh, establishing an advanced uh, manufacturing center along with an advanced mechatronics, robotics, and industrial automation laboratory. And uh, here, let me also share with you quickly, we are building regional inclusive innovation centers. In, uh, th this would serve as platforms that would link together innovation stakeholders with entrepreneurs. The goal, of course, is to accelerate the commercialization of R&D investments in the country and, and to be able to create new products and services using uh, Industry 4.0 technologies. And that would address uh, uh, societal issues or industry problems. We have two regions that are actually focusing on electronics and this are uh, Calabarzon and Cebu. And uh, through this uh, RIICs or uh, in regional uh, inclusive innovation centers, we are conducting ideation, design workshops and R&D multi-stakeholder engagements. Okay, let me now go through uh, the uh, electronics industry. Well, this industry, the elect electronics and electrical industry is an important growth driver with over 500 electronics and electrical firms in the country providing uh, 3.2 million jobs and that would cover both direct and indirect uh, uh, employment. And on this uh, slide, you could see that uh, the industry is actually the second largest contributor to the manufacturing industry out output. And sectors such as uh, computer, electronic, and optical products uh, grew by 14.4% in 2017, while electrical equipment posted a growth of 13.8% uh, in 2019. But uh, as we all know, uh, this uh, slowed down due to, the due to the volatility arising from the US-China trade war. And this was uh, um, further exacerbated by the uh, COVID uh, situation and the uh, economic uh, recession um, that emerged. And um, in this uh, slide, uh, you can see that, uh, well, uh, of course, the focus, we, what we aspire really is to create the EMS ecosystem and upgrade our position in the electronics industry uh, by focusing on uh, the manufacturing of uh, products such as drones, autonomous vehicles, smart home uh, devices, virtual reality uh, devices, digital health uh, devices, microsatellite, wearable solar devices, 3D printers, and uh, cobots. And amid the pandemic, we implemented a manufacturing repurposing program elect wherein electronics companies uh, were one of uh, the early responders as they shifted their production towards the manufacturing of COVID critical products like masks and uh, ventilators. So uh, the pandemic has accelerated the penetration of advanced technologies in our systems. And we know that the same technologies will help in uh, transitioning towards a rapid, inclusive, and sustainable economic recovery. According to the recent growth estimates of the Asian Development Bank, Philipp the Philippines is expected to grow by 6.5% in 2021. And we, with government working together with industry, academe, and other stakeholders, and as the virus is contained together with global recovery, we know that the Philippines will be able to take advantage of the emerging opportunities and challenges from shifting trade and investment preferences and changing forms of international uh, production in the wake of COVID-19. And to realize this, we are fast tracking innovation and adopting new technologies with greater focus on strengthening the electronics manufacturing services in the country. And we see trade and investment cooperation between countries as vital steps as we face the post-crisis future. 
we believe that by, by working together, we can deepen the connection between industries and build strong and resilient supply and value chains, especially in electronics manufacturing services, where new opportunities for growth abound. Thank you very much. Back to you, Jay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Yusek Fita. It's really very interesting to see that the Philippines is in the top 50 of the Global Innovation Index. Uh, good job. And uh, well, as we saw, the post-pandemic uh, situation looks very promising, uh, so we can continue the growth and, and the, uh, the improvements that we've seen over the years. Okay, so for our next speaker, we have Mr. Danny Romero. Danny Romero is the head of Sales Asia for Surface Technology International, SDI. He leads and coordinates the sales team responsible for building and maintaining sales of electronic manufacturing facilities to large corporate firms. Danny was born in Barcelona, Spain, and possesses more than 15 years experience in the electronics industry as an expat in Asia. Everybody, let's welcome Mr. Danny Romero. Um, thank you, Jane. Hi, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here today. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank the Philippine Department of Trade and Industry for organizing the event, uh, Secretary Ramon Lopez for his earlier message, and Under Secretary Fita Aldava for the presentation. Uh, thank you for choosing uh, SDI for today's webinar, and uh, I'm pleased to share a bit of snapshot of SDI capabilities and present the company in this event. So I'll I'll share the company presentation. All right. So I think everybody can see it. The first slide talks uh, about STI. Uh, STI is uh, well offers electronic manufacturing services. STI was founded in 1989 uh, in the UK and was originally providing uh, PCB assemblies for aerospace and defense market. The company uh, was evolving along the years and it diversifies, uh, offering full end to end services, not only PCBA. Uh, today, the most relevant market sectors uh, that we, uh, we are in is aerospace, defense, uh, security, um, healthcare and life sciences, which includes the medical, uh, energy, uh, communication, and IoT. The company uh, has expanded their footprint along these years. Uh, so after setting up uh, the, main, the headquarters in, in the UK, in Hope, uh, there was a Cebu, a Cebu plan acquisition, which is the one that I'm based. It, that acquisition happened in 2010. That's when the setup of the org. And the main idea at that time was to replicate the factory that it was already well set up in the UK and have it in Southeast Asia. That will allow it, uh, to, to have more competitive prices labor wise and maintaining the same quality standards and technology. Um, moving forward, uh, the company acquired a former Airbus facility in Poynton, that's also in the UK. And a few years later, um, IMI acquire STI. I'll talk a little bit more about IMI in, in, in the next slides. Um, I'd like to mention also that uh, one of the important points of the company is the engineering um, uh, capabilities in our R&D department, which has been providing a, a wide uh, angle solutions to all our product cycles and customers. Um, next, uh, this slide talks a little bit about the group that we are part of, um, IMI, uh, well, STI was acquired by IMI, as I mentioned. Um, IMI is the manufacturing portfolio of AC Industrials, uh, which is owned by Ayala Corporation. Um, just to provide you an insight of IMI relevance in the market, uh, the company is inside the top 20 EMS providers in the world. Or just looking at the automotive EMS specifically, IMI ranks inside the top five EMS worldwide. Um, the annual business revenue of IMI, which is more than $1.3 billion. Uh, and uh, merging STI to the group provided uh, provide the strategic opportunities in aerospace and defense engineering. 
uh, which is the, the which is STI's course business. Uh, the objective of this acquisition was aligned with the company vision to constantly develop and evolve into new technologies and market diversification. Uh, next slide talks about our footprint. So at uh, the map we can see uh, where are IMI locations and where is STI locations, STI in blue, IMI in, in red. Um, so I, as you can see, um, STI and IMI has presence in the US as well. Uh, we have manufacturing footprint in the US in, in Dustin, which is oriented to support prototyping and, pre and pre-productions. Um, just looking specifically at STI in blue, uh, highlighted, we have our headquarters located in Hook, which is yes. um, then uh, aside from Hook, we have in the north of the country, we have our uh, site in Poynton, which is near Manchester. And then we have our R&D offices in, in London. Um, the third factory is located in the Philippines, in Cebu, uh, where is where I'm broadcasting today. Um, next, I'd like to show you just an introduction of Cebu. So you can see um, a factory, kind of a factory tour. Uh, you're going to see our equipment and uh, it's just a two minute video. Um, hope you enjoy it. Hi, my name is Daniel Romero. I'm from Barcelona, Spain, and we are here in Cebu, Philippines. Welcome and please come in. For several years, I've been working in this wonderful island as a head of sales Asia for Surface Technology International, an electronic manufacturing company that focuses on markets such as aerospace, defense, industrial, commercial or automotive between others. STI is proudly part of IMI. We have customer presence in every continent, even in the space. When I arrived to Cebu more than nine years ago to make the setup of the factory, we were just five people. And today we are proud to have more than 500 engineers and operators. Every day, I feel privileged to work side by side with our vibrant Filipino team and deliver the highest quality product to the international market. I'm in charge of widening the new business development and strengthening the relation with our existing long-term partners. How do we keep up with the pace on this fast-growing industry? Simple. First, we take care of our people. STI carries out a development program where Filipino engineers are trained for more than six months in the UK headquarters. This is a great opportunity for our staff, which improve communication and knowledge between our factories. Secondly, STI and IMI invest a great capital in bringing new equipment and guarantee that aerospace quality standards are maintained in our processes. If you want more information, please do visit our website or contact us through LinkedIn or email. Thank you so much. Right, um, so next uh, we'll expand a little bit more about uh, Cebu capabilities and, and Cebu overview, our plan in Cebu. So Cebu is located in the middle, in the middle of the Philippines for those that has not been able to travel to the Philippines. Um, it's the island right in the middle. Uh, it's the second largest hub uh, in the Philippines after the capital Manila. And it's very well connected uh, through, uh, through uh, airplane and through boat. So our logistics are uh, actually really good. We have, just to give you an example for our, uh, the airlines are connecting directly Cebu, international flights going to Singapore, going to Hong Kong, Korea, Dubai, Japan, now Qatar or Australia. Um, so sending the products and, and arranging all the logistics with our suppliers and customers is quite easy especially at the international airport is just located at our back, uh, at our back door. It's just five, literally five minutes from the factory. Uh, the seaport is also located about 15 minutes from the factory. So it can it also link the, the major ports in China, Singapore, Hong Kong. Um, moving to the Philippines, it was a strategic um, setup uh, because the company wanted to have 
a, a, a strong and reliable footprint in, in Asia to be able to provide um, competitive pricing and maintaining uh, all the all the technology and equipment that SCI has from from the UK. Um, the Philippines was a very logical um, a change uh, or adjustment because in the Philippines there's already a very big um, background in in the industry in the electronics industry. As Secretary Aldaba was mentioning some of some of these advantages and, and big players uh, in the role in, in the country. Um, in terms of uh, a factory, so we are, Cebu factory is about 500 employees currently. Um, our main advantages, uh, it's, as I said, the technology that we are using it with Mirrors UK. Uh, our employees are very well qualified and trained. Uh, actually, we have a program where we are sending uh, between 10 to 12 engineers to the UK and they have their station there for six months and later they come back and the same way we have uh, engineers from the UK staying over here in Cebu. We try to keep all our factories uh, synchronized and up to date. Um, uh, one of the advantages of Cebu is that it can cater larger volumes that our facility in, in the UK. Um, and uh, we have a full IP protection and full traceability guarantee. Uh, next slide uh, is talking also about the corporation and that goes aligns a little bit with what I've just discussed a few minutes ago, where we try from the very beginning, uh, STI try to um, um, create a seamless technical transfer between the UK to the Philippines. Uh, we have many customers that we have started in, in the UK. Uh, we do the prototyping, the design stage at our customer uh, door. And uh, later on, uh, once the product is settled, it has been transferred to the Philippines, offering a more competitive pricing and maintaining the same quality standards. The same type of things we can do with, uh, with the US because uh, of our sales offices there and our prototyping facility. Uh, we can engage with the customer in the US. We will be close to them. Our team will be close to them and then later on have the transfer done seamless to the Philippines. Um, We'll go to the next slide. Uh, so the next slide will, will talk about the capabilities that STI has in Cebu. So we can do design for manufacturing test. Um, we can do new product introduction, prototypings, uh, surface mount, mount assembly, obviously in terms of line mounting, uh, conventional through hole assembly, uh, wave soldering and selective solder test, box build and test, uh, coating on an encapsulation, special processes uh, and product support. So these are just the main, uh, the main capabilities. Uh, next slides, next two slides are showing you uh, what are the, uh, the products that we are currently uh, manufacturing in the, fact in, in the Philippines. So we are into the automotive, uh, medical, uh, security, um, energy monitoring, uh, mobility, EV chargers, maritime safety, air filtration, alarm systems, all of these products we manufacture at the PCBs here in Cebu, and we de deliver directly to our customers, either at the PCB level or box, with, or box build level. Let me show you the next slide, uh, which shows another, um, another type of products for power monitoring, uh, water meters, uh, tracking devices, aerospace, which is still the, the company core business, uh, and smart energy between others like insurance telematics. So let me take some minutes to talk about how STI responded to the uh, coronavirus event, which obviously pandemic, which obviously has impacted all the businesses worldwide. So STI um, has been pivoting towards the new needs. And although our core business was aerospace, defense and military, uh, we adapted to the medical uh, need uh, of the country and of our customers. Uh, one of the of the products I want to showcase is the uh, Penlon. I oh, sorry, I skipped it accidentally. Is the uh, Penlon? So uh, Penlon is a ventilator uh, that uh, we have currently delivered around eleven thousand seven hundred units in a record time. Uh, then uh, we took it into an export role outside of the of the UK. Um, our two facilities in the UK, uh, Hook and Pointon, 
uh, performed brilliantly, brilliantly, brilliantly in delivering this product successfully. And uh, this was the start of our one company principle, uh, which is uh, how to different parts of our manufacturing family pull together uh, to deliver a big program. Um, the next product I will I would like to showcase is a product uh, from uh, a product called Opticens. Opticens is an RT lamp test, which are uh, used for the for the COVID COVID tests, which are needed everywhere. Um, we are currently we have currently deployed uh, around sixty. We are sorry, we are currently producing sixty thousand PCBs, uh, which are being manufactured in Cebu. The PCBs are going to be shipped to our uh, headquarters in Hook. And then from Hook, uh, we are going to send it to our third facility in Poynton in the north. And then in Poynton will be assembly the full module. So uh, you can see just in this example, how the three sites are collaborating uh, towards uh, a greater end, which is to have these products deployed with the minimum uh, time possible and within the time frames available. Um, I want to say that building these products were not easy. Uh, actually, we have to apply uh, extensive safety controls to protect our employees and deliver and deliver upon customer promise, despite the unprecedented circumstances. So, um, before I wrap it all up, I'd like to show you um, the uh, the company uh, presentation, the corporate presentation you have seen before Cebu. And now you will see some images of our, our headquarters in Bolivia. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so uh, that concludes the, the presentation. Um, thank you so much to everybody. I hope 
that gives a better overview of um, uh, STI uh, capabilities and and how we've been, uh, where are the market sectors that we are currently working and, and how we are adapting on on this on these days. Um, so uh, Jay, thank you so much, and I'm handing back to you. Thank you, Danny, for sharing with us how STI Limited Philippines successfully coped with the challenges and demand brought about by this pandemic. You know, it's very impressive, Danny, to see STI serving aerospace and um, the medical industries. You know, I know that these industries have very high standards and, and tough, very tough requirements, so it's, it's very impressive indeed. Okay, so uh, to continue, I'm sure that our participants have more questions uh, following the presentations. So let's proceed to our panel discussion. Uh, the first question we have here is actually for you, uh, Yusek Fita. Uh, the Philippine Congress is about to approve a landmark corporate tax and incentives reform package called CREATE. What are the highlights of this legislation and how do the changes proposed by CREATE bill impact existing prospective foreign investors into the Philippines? Yeah, thank you, uh, Jay. That's a very important question. Well, in fact, the, the approved version of the Senate will still need to go through bicameral uh, deliberations. And we are hoping that this would be finished by uh, January 2021. But um, just to give a few highlights, number one, uh, there's going to be a reduction in the corporate uh, income tax rate by uh, five uh, percentage points from the current 30% to 25% for large companies. And uh, for, MS, uh, for SMEs, uh, the, the, this is going to be reduced from uh, the 30% would be reduced to 30%. And uh, second is that uh, existing enterprises would continue to enjoy their uh, income tax holiday along with uh, those that are still availing of uh, the, I, the their 5% uh, tax on gross income earned. There's going to be a transition period of uh, 10 years. And uh, there's uh, third is that uh, our a new menu of incentives is going to be offered apart from the income tax holiday um, there's also going to be a 5% special corporate income tax. Uh, so we're retaining the 5% gross and it's part of uh, the menu of incentives that uh, investors could choose from. And then uh, uh, an ad in addition, there's also uh, going to be an enhanced uh, deduction, which would include 100% additional deduction on your R&D expenses, 100% additional deduction on training expenses, 50% on labor expenses, 50% on domestic input expenses, as well as 50% uh, uh, additional deduction on your power expenses. And in terms of the period of availment of these incentives, um, the period is going to be from 14 to 17 years, depending on your tier, as well as on your geographic uh, location. Uh, but more importantly, uh, the, the CREATE is going to provide uh, special power to uh, the president to modify the current mix that I've just uh, described, as well as to create the appropriate uh, financial support uh, package for highly desirable projects. So we, in this uh, particular provision, we can actually go beyond the income tax holidays or the additional deductions, and we can offer uh, subsidies, uh, especially to those that are highly desirable and strategic. And uh, of course, CREATE uh, aims to provide more generous incentives, especially for those that would be bringing in innovative and high-tech activities, such as those in electronics and uh, uh, that would embed new technologies along with projects that would address the gaps in our supply and value chain. Uh, the CREATE would also harmonize the current incentive systems across the different uh, investment promotion agencies. It would also um, remove the current nationality uh, requirement as well as provide the same set of incentives to the to strategic uh, domestic market oriented activities similar to those that export oriented activities are receiving all right wow um 
Indeed, I, I think the Create Build really should be creating more investments uh, with, with all the incentives that, that you mentioned, uh, Yusek Fita. Thank you, thank you for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the aim. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Okay, we have a question here for, for Danny. Um, COVID-19 exposed the need for countries, including the US, to safeguard their supply of strategic medical supplies and equipment. How does SDI Limited see itself contributing to ensuring that this need is met? Um, well, yeah, as you said, Jay, uh, COVID-19 has creating a lot of challenges um, to the medical supply worldwide. Uh, so actually I'm going to explain you how, how the company has tried to adapt to these times because um, the company has to uh, pivot to meet the new demands. Uh, just STI and IMI were both electronic manufacturing uh, services prior to the pandemic. Uh, obviously, they have um, uh, products in the, in the medical sector, but uh, they were just focusing on the electronic manufacturing. And nowadays, just to give you one example, uh, IMI is manufacturing around 2 million of face masks, or, of, of face masks per month in, in Manila, uh, which they are distributing. Um, the company also, um, IMI and STI, uh, has been has introduced a uh, new device, use, UCL device, which is uh, called a Ventura Flow Generator. It's actually um, a non a non invasive uh, non invasive ventilatory support, uh, which is designed to help COVID nineteen patients to avoid uh, the need for intubation uh, treatment. That's an FDA uh, approved equipment, and that will help many many hospitals uh, because. Uh, you know, the, the, before I was, I was showing some slides about the big respirators that we are doing in the manufacturing uh, in the UK for the hospitals. And this, this uh, smaller device, it's easy to transport, it's easy to reach uh, clinics, uh, because we, we all know that in the big cities, uh, we, we have the central hospitals, but the COVID-19 has spread absolutely everywhere. And there are some uh, smaller clinics or, or smaller locations where they don't have much, much respirators. So, so this type of solution, um, uh, it's, it's providing support to, to, to that need. Uh, as I said, this is a product that has been developed between us, SDI and IMI, and IMI is, is, is currently manufacturing. Um, I'll give you another example about how SDI has adapted and is providing support to our medical uh, customers in the US uh, and worldwide. Well, we, I talked before um, in the slides about Penlon, the respirators. Uh, I've talked um, about um, the OptiSense uh, test products, which uh, also detect uh, uh, test uh, COVID uh, positives. Um, I think it was about 60,000 60, PCBs that we are, we are currently delivering. And uh, the last thing, the last product I like to highlight also to fight COVID, it's about the, the hand sanitizers. Um, something that simple as the hand sanitizers, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, been, it's been really, really hectic over here, especially in Cebu. We have deployed more than 1 million touchless uh, hand sanitizers in the past nine months. And those sanitizers are going absolutely everywhere. Just going offices, uh, elevators, uh, hospitals, just uh, everywhere. We are delivering those to uh, the US, which is one of our main uh, customers, um, located Canada, uh, Europe, uh, UK, uh, so, so those has been really the main, uh, the main products and how we have been supporting the, the medical need right now. Thank you so much for the question, Jay. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for that. Very, very interesting indeed. Well, we have a follow-up for you. Um, the diversification of U.S. company supply chain has generally been regarded as the way to go in the face of the evolving U.S.-China trade relations and the challenges and vulnerabilities brought about by the disruptions caused by the pandemic. How do you see SDI's operations in the Philippines assisting U.S. companies in this regard? And what particular strengths uh, does SDI bring to the table moving forward? Um, well, yeah, you, you're right. I mean, the, the tension between uh, China and, and U.S. And, and the global pandemic, both together, has, uh, well, Basically, I'll say that has both both identified the need to diversify supply chain, um, and I think this has shifted also the view of the U.S. companies. Uh, just looking 
towards another countries to guarantee no, no disruption in their supply. Um, STI and IMI uh, have uh, capabilities and, and the setup necessary to cover the full electronic customer needs uh, or end-to-end -end services. Uh, we, we can start, we, we start the support through our um, R&D department, which uh, helps the customer at the very early stages of the design, either on, on the PCB design, designing the software, the firmware, or the, or the, the, the approvals of the product under FDA. Um, that's just the, the initial stage. And then it goes through the manufacturing stage where any of our facilities uh, in our in located worldwide can, can, can support. Um, I think the combination, our main skills, uh, it's, or, or the strength, you were talking about the strength. So I think the main, the main strength uh, that we can offer is a combination of a solid corporation, uh, which I've been discussing about SDI, uh, IMI, and the Yala Corporation that we are part of. I'll say uh, a skillful team and resources, um, a continued investment in new technologies, uh, competitive labor prices uh, located uh, over here in the Philippines, um, and then our global footprint support. I think those are uh, at the top of the list of the, of the strengths that the company can offer to US customers. Um, I like to say also that I think to provide more added value to our customers and reduce cost, uh, the company uh, has always considered, well, has lately considered uh, key the investment done in data engineering and expanding its real time analytics capability. I think these both factors are also key uh, to provide added value to the company. I, I hope that addressed the question, yeah. yeah. Th thank you for that, uh, Danny. Yeah, indeed, indeed, uh, those are the key strengths uh, for STI. So thank you, thank you for that. We have, we have a question uh, for you, Sekfita. So, well, this is a this is a very big question, actually. What is the Philippine government doing to ensure the timely and orderly rollout of a COVID nineteen vaccination program? Yeah, thank you, Jay. Well, uh, there is a roadmap, uh, the National COVID-19 Vaccination Roadmap, along with uh, its implementation plan. And this is being led by Secretary Galvez. Uh, negotiations with COVID-19 vaccine manufacturers like Sinovac, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Johnson & Johnson are actually currently ongoing. Uh, and uh, the Philippines has already secured an initial 2.6 million doses uh, from AstraZeneca through a memorandum of agreement with the government. There are also talks with Chinese vaccine manufacturer Sinovac Biotech, um, and uh, these talks will soon be finalized and will likely supply the country with 25 million doses of uh, vaccines by March uh, 2021. And then the Department of Health also has been allocating funds uh, for the purchase of COVID-19 uh, vaccines. And uh, along with uh, also uh, preparing the logistical requirements for uh, the vaccines by uh, finding uh, in uh, ample number of cold storage uh, warehouses, which uh, we know are uh, crucial to ensure the vaccine's uh, efficacy. And in addition, there are also funds that are being secured through uh, proposed uh, legislations which are uh, currently being discussed. The version has already that noise coming from me or uh... yeah, I hope I, I, I hope I was heard, uh, Jay. Uh, there was some noise that uh, I'm hearing. Okay, it's uh, it's no longer there. But uh, okay, so just to repeat my last point, and uh, funds are continuously being secured uh, through uh, several uh, uh, proposed uh, legislations, including the procurement, of course, of uh, COVID-19 drugs and vaccines and appropriating the necessary funds to ensure that uh, Philippines would be ready. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Back to you. You said, Fita. Well, it's it's you know it's good to hear, of course, uh, that we have a very uh, good program uh, already in place. Thank thank you for that. Yeah. Now, yeah, <laughs> you know. Every... <laughs> well, we know that we need to address the health crisis. Otherwise, it would be difficult to 
uh, recover and attain a sustainable, resilient, and inclusive growth. So that's a priority. Yes, yes. So thank you. Um, we have a question here for Danny. Uh, the Philippines is a sizable market with over 100 million population. What are the opportunities for U.S. companies in tapping into this uh, available market? Can it be based in? Can it also be a base in reaching the rest of ASEAN and, and the broader Asian market? Sorry, Jay, can you hear me now? Yes, Perfect. we can. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, I think I can I can elaborate on, on this question about the, the local market. Uh, I, do, I do agree the local market um, with uh, you were saying 100, 100 million population of the country is, is, a, is, a, is a very decent uh, number to look at for, for companies that wants to uh, introduce their products in the country. Um, I think there is a full range of uh, possibilities for, for the US products. Uh, if you ask me personally, I would highlight the potential markets, especially in the in IoT, uh, renewable renewable energy, uh, or immobility. Uh, for immobility, for example, I think there is a, a lot of opportunities in there, and I think the government is, uh, is is finding and is looking for constantly for solutions. Because for those of you that has not visited uh, the capitals like Manila or Cebu, um, traffic is, is is really hard to bear sometimes. And, and I think the, the government is really trying to, to invest and find solutions for, 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 those, uh, for those internal logistics and, and, and traffic improvement. So I think immobility is a very, very good area. Um, another one I'd like to highlight probably communication, obviously. Uh, we need to think that the Philippines uh, has thousands of islands uh, connected. So I think communication between, between all of them and, and in between islands is, is, is very important. Um, actually, this is something that uh, has also benefited our group uh, because uh, as we, since we are part of, of Ayala Corporation, um, STI, STI and IMI are just a portion of the, of the electronic manufacturing, but the group is involved in most of the relevant sectors in the country. Uh, Ayala Corporation is involved in utilities, in banking, uh, telecommunications, automotive, education, uh, you can name uh, BPI Bank, uh, Globe Telecommunication. So all these major corporations are part of the group. And, uh, and from STI and IMI, we were able to bring the customer opportunities to these platforms. So those platforms can be divulged to the local market. So I think that's, that's a win-win situation for, for, for everybody. Hope that addresses the question, Jay. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Th thank you, uh, Danny. Uh, for Yusek Fita, uh, we know that the, a major cog of the Philippine government's infrastructure program called Build, Build, Build program is the completion of the Skyway 3 that connects the South Expressway and the North uh, Expressways and the North Harbor Link. How do you see the completion of these two major logistics and transport projects? impacting the movement of goods between the Port of Manila and the manufacturing hubs located in Calabarzon, Clark, and Subic? Well, uh, as we know, the, the completion of uh, Skyway 3 and the North uh, Harbor Link uh, um, infrastructure projects uh, would definitely improve uh, transport, logistics, and mobility to and from Metro Manila to the, uh, to, uh, the other ne nearby regions uh, in Calabarzon and Region 3, which as we know are uh, the centers of manufacturing activities in the country. And uh, according to uh, the Department of Public Works, uh, the Skyway 3 project is expected to reduce traffic in Metro Manila by around uh, 20 to 30 percent. And that's really um, a very significant uh, figure. Um, likewise, the North Harbor Link is uh, expected to reduce 
travel time from Commonwealth to Mindanao Avenue by uh, 30 minutes. And uh, this segment is also expected to improve the cargo movement to and from the port of Manila by providing direct access between uh, radial road 10, R10, and uh, the NLEC. So all of this uh, infrastructure, in very important infrastructure projects would contribute to reducing transportation and logistics costs, which would add, of course, to the improvement of uh, ease of doing business and uh, uh, the competitiveness of our firms and industries. Thank, thank you, Yusekita. We're all looking forward to the completion of all these projects. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sure it will benefit everybody a lot. Yes, yes. And That's stimulate true. a lot of economic activities, uh, Jay. We, we, we are all aware of that uh, uh, positive impact uh, arising from the, uh, create, from the uh, construction of uh, roads such as these ones. That's right. That's right. Now, another question for you, uh, Yusekita. What benefits will the recent signing of the RCEP bring to the Philippine economy in general and her manufacturing sector in particular? Well, again, that's a uh, uh, relatively new development, the signing of the RCEP or Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Um, well, this, is, as uh, mentioned also by uh, the secretary in his uh, uh, um, keynote, uh, he, we, we uh, of course welcome the, this development, especially in the light of the heightening global protectionism and uh, recession. Um, well, the RCEP consists of uh, the 10 ASEAN member countries, uh, plus China, Japan, Korea, Australia, and New Zealand, which all together uh, represent a market of 2.2 billion people. Imagine what a big market that is. 28% um, of world trade, 30% of world GDP, 24% of inward FDI, and they also account for 34% of outward um, FDI. And so RCEP is expected to benefit our manufacturing industries, not only in terms of the huge uh, market access and trade uh, opportunities that it uh, offers, but as well as in promoting investment. And then it also provides a more stable, predictable, and fair um, environment for businesses and uh, investments. Note also that RCEP is a modern, it's a comprehensive and a high quality uh, free trade agreement covering new areas such as e-commerce, competition, intellectual property, and government procurement, including uh, SME development. But we know that in order to benefit fully from this market opening and trade and investment opportunities uh, arising from this uh, regional free trade agreement, our industries need to be strong and ready for global and com regional competition. And for the Philippines, one of our primary strategies is really to fast track innovation and the adoption of new technologies with greater focus on strengthening the competitiveness of our industries. And I think that would uh, sum up all the efforts that we are doing. We really want to make our industries competitive, innovative in order to be able to attract more uh, investments, not only coming from within the region, but um, from uh, other uh, areas such as the US and other developed countries. Thank you for that uh, uh, answer, Yusek Pita. Really, you know, it's a, it's a bigger, we're opening up uh, to a bigger market, uh, but then, as you said, we have to be more competitive. Indeed, indeed. Okay, for, for Danny, um, we have a question for you. What are the advantages in STI locating its operations in Cebu, and how do you, how do these benefit your U.S. clients? Okay. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, just um, sending this question, Jay. Uh, yeah, actually, I think I'll answer this question just um, um, with some of the slides that I have, I have shown before. So I think um, we are, uh, SDI and, and, and NIMA is located in, in a strategic location uh, here in the Philippines and more specifically in, in Cebu, where we located our plan. Uh, we are in between America and Europe. So logistically, it makes sense to be located over here. Um, obviously, um, uh, these logistics involve uh, the, 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 the hubs that I was discussing before to airlines and boat, which 
we can we can divert and we can um, move our our supply chain uh, around uh, quite easily. Um, one of the main advantages as well would be the, the labor rates that we can offer from, from here from the Philippines. We have a very skillful um, staff and engineering uh, qualified. I think if, if I'm not mistaken, I think every, every year we have around a half million of graduates uh, in the country, if I'm not mistaken. Mistaken, and uh, and this uh, this is really a huge pool of of skilled manpower, and uh, and STI is is, um, is is collaborating with with uh, with that opportunity. Um, so that's that's another of the points. It's 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 really really important. Um, we are STI. Uh, it's inside of the free trade zone. Uh, we are inside of, of PESA economic zone, which uh, is a uh, tax exempted area. I think the government uh, has worked for many years to develop uh, all these areas to claim the, um, the investor's attention. And that's why uh, the last uh, 10 to 20 years, the Philippines has been so su successful, just bringing some of the biggest uh, manufacturers uh, to the country. Um, that means if, uh, being part of, of a business zone, it means that we don't have, as I said, we are basically tax exempted, which can benefit our, our US customers unless on some of the current policies uh, with, with China, for example. Um, another uh, advantage, uh, I would highlight the language. I think something so simple as a language is, is, is important. Uh, before coming to the Philippines, I was living in, in, in other countries and, and in China for a while. And uh, I realized there how, how difficult the language barrier it is sometimes. And uh, if you put that together into, into a room or meeting with uh, 20 people or 30 people, then you have a translator and you have to communicate that with the customer. That makes things really difficult. And I have to say that since I arrived here, um, I, I could see like everybody speaks English. So it does, it, it's not only uh, people in, in, in universities or, or, or educated people. It's just literally everywhere we can see um, uh, grandparents and very, very young chil ch uh, children, which are uh, speaking a, 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 an incredible level of English. And that's really important because when you are in the factory and you want to talk with the customer, you, you have to create the work instructions of your product. You have to, to, to interact with your customer at all the, the levels. And that, uh, that English, um, that, that language, uh, language uh, just helps to ease all of that processes. And I think that's a big benefit for the, for the US uh, companies. Um, just to mention another one, uh, probably certifications. I think the certifications that we have here in the factory in Cebu are, are really top notch. Uh, we are talking about um, automotive certificate. We are IATF 6949. We have medical certification, ISO 13485. And then also uh, we are the only EMS certified under the aerospace, which is the AS 9100. Um, so uh, these certifications together with our uh, IP protection protocols, which aligns with our, our UK uh, protection protocols, I think those are some of the advantages that can, uh, can, be, can be benefiting our US customers. Well, th thank you. Thank you for that, Dan. Indeed, uh, your US clients will, will really benefit from that. Uh, last question. Uh, we're, uh, last question for, for this webinar is for Yusek Pita. Uh, during the Manufacturing Summit last week, some industry leaders shared their business outlook for the coming year. Would you mind sharing their points to the audience? And uh, also, how did the Philippine government address the challenges brought about by the pandemic? Yeah, oh, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Um, well, let me start by uh, mentioning Secretary Lopez's uh, uh, message, which uh, really highlighted the, the importance of the CREATE as well as the RCEP, uh, which are two major developments that could offer opportunities for our manufacturing uh, enterprises. And of course, he also emphasized the importance of digital transformation and collaboration 
and be affirmed the need to renew government's commitment to work together with industry and academe as we develop a smarter and resilient manufacturing industry. And then uh, the speakers from uh, the industry also, of course, highlighted the vital roles of uh, the public and the private sectors in rebuilding the country's manufacturing capacity and pursuing uh, digital transformation. Uh, emphasis was also uh, uh, on uh, the need for us to safeguard lives and livelihood, along with the need to build uh, resilient supply chains. And of course, uh, innovation, which uh, should be at the heart, at the center of our economic uh, recovery. So maybe I'll just uh, highlight four points with the need for us to embrace Industry 4.0 um, through the use and adoption of new technologies in order to strengthen uh, the competitiveness and resilience of our industries, uh, the need for companies to innovate, to integrate into digital economy, form industry clusters, and pursue um, global and regional collaboration, and the need for us to reskill, upskill our workforce, and strengthening government academic industry uh, collaboration. And with respect to the second question, well, as we all know, with the pandemic, one particular issue that emerged was the shortage of PPEs. And since we didn't have a PPE industry, um, what we did was to uh, uh, implement the manufacturing repurposing program. Uh, this repurposed manufacturing activities toward the production of uh, COVID critical products. And we've seen uh, government exporters moving towards the production, for example, of uh, isolation gowns and coveralls, while electronics companies moved uh, their production towards uh, surgical masks, infrared uh, thermometers, ventilators, um, COVID test kits, and then even manufacturers of wines and spirits moved into the production of ethyl alcohol. So uh, we're hoping that uh, through this uh, initiative, we'll be able to build finally a PPE industry along with the other uh, health products that uh, I've mentioned. Okay, th th thank you for that uh, comprehensive uh, answer, Yusek Pita. Oh. So thank you everybody for the lively discussion. You know, we have to apologize for not being able to raise all the questions in the Q&A, uh, but we will be sharing the, to the attendees all the PowerPoint presentations as well the answers to your Q&A via the email that you use to register. Uh, at this point, uh, may I invite all the organizers to this webinar to join us? Ms. Lani Dormiendo and Ryan Ramos of BOI. Uh, the DTI representatives uh, in the U.S., SDR Nicanor Bautista from New York, SDR Raymond Bata from Washington, D.C. Of course, we have uh, TC Celine Laig from the Silicon Valley, oh. <laughs> uh, TC Eric Elnar from, from L.A. Hello, everybody. Okay, um, we'll flash the contact details uh, so you can you can note down the this contact details so you can get in touch directly with with Danny or BOI uh, or the DTI representatives uh, in the US um, for any questions or or would you like to pursue any activity in the Philippines so please do contact us mm -hmm. okay so uh we're we're in, we're at the end of the seminar and uh, we would like to thank everyone this webinar is part of the make it happen in the philippines electronics manufacturing webinar series so watch out for the next one the next webinar is titled rf microwave technology and iot component manufacturing maraming salamat and we look forward to seeing you again in our next webinar on january 28th yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.